few things are as satisfying as this. This is a, a freshly waxed chain. I waxed this last night. If you've never waxed a chain before, usually you apply the wax treatment, let it cool overnight, and it becomes kind of hard and stiff. And the next morning you get to break all the links. I know this is super nerdy, but it's oddly satisfying to do. What it reminds me of is, I don't know if you guys did this in grade school, but when you would take Elmer's glue and put it on your hands, let it dry and peel it off, this has that same kind of tactile, weird, but funness to it. Usually I would take a dowel and kind of run this through a small radius dowel or something. But for the purposes of this video, since I would be kind of awkward to film, I'm just gonna do it by hand. And I'm also gonna give you guys a little bit of an update on my experience with chain waxing so far. If there's one thing I've learned about chain waxing or making a video about chain waxing is that many people have many different opinions. And I'm gonna state right off the bat that this isn't for everybody. It takes some time, it takes some investment, and for some people the convenience of just using a typical wet lube outweighs any benefits of using chain wax. So I'm not saying you should do it, but these are the reasons why I've been doing it and a little bit about my experience so far. I've been using the wax products by Silka. This is unsponsored. I purchased all the wax stuff with my own money. So this is the hardened wax. When you purchase it, it actually comes in a bag with pellets and you can actually put that bag in a pot of boiling water to liquefy it and do your chain waxing. Josh at Silka recommends using an Instapot. So that's what I've tried just for, for best results. Uh, you'll notice that it has a grayish color. Some people commented that, you know, I contaminated the wax, all that stuff. I did not. The wax comes with a specific additive. In the case of Silka, it's tungsten disulfide in a very, in a very fine granular size. I know it's a thing for people to mix up their own uh, chain wax using PTFE. I didn't feel like going all breaking bad just to wax a chain. So, so I bought the Silka stuff because it already has an additive. I don't have to do all the other science things. The tungsten disulfide in this case is very tenacious. It attaches itself to, to metals. It, it works its way into all the nooks and crannies of your chain. And to my understanding, that is what acts as the kind of, uh, I don't want to say lubricant, but friction decreasing substance, if you will. When you first get a chain, uh, you have to remove all the factory oils. That's, there's a whole process with solvents and degreasers. And after that, you liquefy the wax, you put the chain in there, and then you hang it up to cool off, wherein you get the stiff uh, chain that I showed you earlier in the video that you then break apart and then put on your bike. And I know what you're thinking, gosh darn it, that's a real pain in the ass. I don't want to have to do that every 100 miles. And here's the thing. You don't have to. Silka makes another product. This is a kind of liquefied version of their regular wax. It's in a alcohol emulsion that then evaporates. But basically, after you've done the initial hot wax uh, treatment, you can do maintenance treatments, which is just as easy as using regular wet lubes. So with like any other lube, after you've done the initial treatment, um, every couple hundred miles, and you would drip you would drip this on one drop per link just like any other wet lube again this has the same additive which is the nano tungsten disulfide it says there on the label for some reason people in the comments always want to fight about what's in the wax that's what it is tungsten disulfide it's not ptfe there's many reasons to wax your chain some people do it for the marginal speed gains that i'm not really interested in uh, the biggest reason i started waxing is because it supposedly helps prevent wear. It prevents wear on your chain and therefore your drivetrain. The, the idea is this, when you use a wet lube that will attract uh, dust and grit and as you pedal that basically forms a grinding paste which then eats away at your chain and transitively your drivetrain. Things like supply chain issues and just inflation and the price of components going up. I thought waxing would generally be cheap insurance uh, just to make sure the drivetrain lasts longer. On all my personal bikes, I have changed to a wax chain system. Uh, I recently did a check with the handy dandy park tool uh, chain checker and all the chains are in pretty good condition. Probably the most worn chains are still between 0.25 and 0.5% wear. So for a frame of reference, you're supposed to change your chain when it gets to that 0.75 mark. Still plenty of life on all the chains that I've waxed so far. The, the, cha the chains which have had the most wear uh, are Laura's Breadwinner because that's the only bike she rides. 
my wear is distributed amongst many bikes, but the bike chain that has seen the most wear is the one that's on my Bear Claw, which I took down to Southern California and down to Nebraska when we did that trip. It's, it's just currently seeing the most use and still, according to the chain checker, is wearing fairly new. So unfortunately, there are limits to my experimentation. There, there are just so many bikes I ride and have to test ride that uh, it's hard to keep track of. Is it wearing any slower than, let's say, a traditional wet loop chain? I can't say conclusively because I've not been tracking that data. But so far at this rate, I should get at least another year, if not another two years, uh, out of the chain on the bear claw. One of the things I wanted to test uh, over a period of time was, was it any more inconvenient than traditional wet lube? After you go through the initial rigmarole, it's actually no less difficult than any traditional wet lube. You do have to be a little bit more mindful about what you ride through. If you ride through really wet conditions, you want to wipe down the chain immediately uh, after the ride and apply this. But generally speaking, the day-to-day -day maintenance isn't any more difficult than a traditional wet lube. I, I do find, however, that the drip version of the wax isn't as clean and pristine as when you do a full immersion. So the first couple hundred miles coming out of the initial waxing is just superb. It's smooth, it's super clean. Previous touch-ups with the drip version still maintain that smoothness, but when you wipe your finger on the chain, it's not as clean. So what I found is for best results, use the immersion, tune it up for a couple hundred miles, maybe a thousand miles. And then at that point, I would probably do another uh, kind of full wax immersion treatment. Remember, you don't have to do this like every week or, or every month if you don't want to. This is just to do that deep initial cleanse and then you can maintain it with this stuff. Uh, another big question was cost. Is it worth it? Uh, there is a little bit of initial investment in terms of time and if you don't have a crock pot or instapot, but I think the, the price generally balances out. What, what you are spending more of is time in that initial cleaning. Another thing I should state, after you've done that initial pass with all the solvents to remove the factory grease, in, su in subsequent uh, full wax immersions, you don't have to do it because you have all that factory grease out already. So you literally just you know, get this liquefied, drop this in there, and then hang it up to cool. With the wax chains, we've ridden in some wet and muddy and also dusty and dry environments. I, I rode a wax chain when we went down to Nebraska. We had a full on full Midwestern storm, lots of rain, lots of mud. And at the end of the ride, I did a quick uh, finger sweep. And you can see how clean the chain was. It was pretty awesome. Some people brought up the issue of their chains rusting when they do uh, a wax chain treatment. If you live in a super wet environment, it's, it's, it's pretty paramount to dry your chain after each ride and reapply this stuff. And if you don't want to hassle with that, then this probably isn't for you. We live in a semi-arid environment and the thing that we're contending mostly with is dust. And this does a good job at not attracting more dust to the chain because it is a dry lube and, and therefore doesn't create a grinding paste and eat away at the chain and your drivetrain, all that stuff. So is it worth it? Am I gonna continue doing it? I think so far it hasn't made my riding experience any worse or the maintenance experience any worse. I do like the peace of mind that it's, you know, not attracting dirt, not creating grinding paste and not eating away at increasingly more expensive and hard to find components. So I think for that reason alone, I'm gonna continue doing it so far. I may set up a bike as a control with wet lube and see if the wear uh, is any quicker. But again, it's hard to do. I have lots of bikes. I ride many bikes all the time. So the wear is distributed um, across several bikes. But what I found so far, it's not a detriment to my riding experience. Maintenance labor, there is some upfront costs, if you will. But after that, it's about par with a petroleum wet loop. The purpose of this, my chain waxing experiments isn't to persuade you to wax your chain. I actually don't care if you do or if you don't, if you use WD-40 or, or olive oil or whatever other weird things people suggest. I'm just sharing my experience so far with chain waxing and kind of explaining is it more difficult? Why I went with the Silka stuff? Again, I know it's a thing to homebrew uh, chain wax. I don't want to deal with it. Honestly, this is a pain in the butt enough for me. So adding the time, money, and stress of tracking down PTFE, making the right mix, all that stuff, I, no thanks. But this stuff, 
pretty easy. And for the foreseeable future, I think I'm going to keep doing it. If you learned something in today's video, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon supporters actually get a discount off of the Silka stuff. I do want to stress we're not getting paid if you, you buy stuff, and I bought this with my own money, but the folks at Silka like the channel and want to pass on a little perk to our Patreon supporters. And if you don't want to do that, uh, consider buying a sticker or a patch. That's what keeps this channel going. We don't have the GCN money quite yet. So thanks everybody and keep the supple side down.